Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear and other random stuff. Apple's first large-scale commercial success was their Apple II line of computers. They had the two, the two plus, which was almost the same, the two E, the two C, which was compact, the sixteen-bit Apple II GS. And finally, the extremely rare Apple IIc Plus. But then Apple introduced Macintosh and allowed the Apple II to die a slow death. And the rest is history. This video is about the repair of a 1984 Apple IIe. I've been thinking about making a video on programming I just feel for making it on an Apple IIe. Yeah, I have other Apple IIs, and I could even do an Apple II in emulation, but you know how sometimes you feel like popcorn and sometimes you feel like cotton candy? I feel like cotton candy, so I want to get my Apple IIe up and running again. A quick tour of this Apple IIe shows an applied engineering memory card in the auxiliary slot, a buffered Grappler Plus parallel printer interface in slot 1, an Apple Super Serial Card serial interface for a printer or modem in slot 2, slot 3 is empty, an Apple mouse interface in slot 4, a 3.5 inch floppy disk controller in slot 5, an Apple 5.25 inch floppy disk controller in slot 6, and a real-time clock I prototyped modeled after the Time Master 2 in slot 7. This is a Rocket Chip 10. It's a plug-in processor replacement that runs roughly 10 times faster than the stock 65 CO2 that goes into an Apple IIe. And this Apple IIe is from the 46th week of 1983. The first thing to attend to is the power supply. The screws have already been removed. There's the inside. There's one reefa capacitor right there. That's all I see in this one. Different models have different numbers of reefa capacitors. They need to be replaced. What I have to do with this power supply is remove the two, four, six screws and uh, take out the strain relief. Uh, perhaps take out these two connections to the board, desolder and replace the old reefa capacitor before it blows up and then put it back together and test the Apple II. This reefa capacitor is cracked all over which means it's ready to pop but I'm not going to be around for it or it's not going to be around for me. Say goodbye. There it is. All done. These other capacitors, they're not bulging. They're not leaking. They look fine. Everything else looks clean. The board is not very toasted, which is good. So back it goes in the case. Let's look at the voltages at the plug. We have 5.1, let's say, on 5, which is okay because it can be plus or minus half a volt. 12, oh, that's beautiful, 12.01 minus, basically minus 11, which is fine for minus 12. And minus 4.6, like 4.7 for minus 5. The two most critical ones are plus 5 and plus 12, and they're beautiful. So this power supply is ready to go and be put back into the Apple IIe and tested. Look at that cursor blink. That's the rocket ship. But I better run the self-diagnostic. It should say system OK or possibly kernel OK. 
That's it. It shouldn't say this. I have a bad RAM chip. Motherboard RAM is found from position F6 to position F13. Like one has already been replaced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's second from the end. It's either this one or this one. Okay. I'm guessing it's this one because it's Micron brand and it's Apple stamped and they have a terrible reputation. I replaced that RAM and now it's showing another one. So let's replace that too. Each time I run the diagnostic, it identifies another RAM as being bad. This time around, the self-diagnostic just freezes. I think I'm going to end up having to replace all the RAM. E-waste. Finally, it works. Now that the power supply works, I can put all the cards back and test it all together. I will be using the Apple IIe with this Apple monitor, A2M6016. It's the monochrome version of the Apple IIgs color monitor. I want to make sure that there are no reflux capacitors inside. The case is held together by two screws on the bottom and two screws on the top. Though there are line capacitors, fortunately they're not reflux line capacitors. So there's nothing to worry about. I can put it back together. Just for the record, picture tube is made by Philips. I didn't know Philips made picture tubes. They certainly don't anymore. That's a pretty good picture. Of course, right now in my viewfinder it looks blue, but it's actually a fairly neutral white. It'll be quite a pleasure to use. I'm sorry to say the 2 E's back on the workbench. I started using it, and after about half an hour, it started turning on and off rapidly. And that is probably because it got hot inside, so it has what's called a thermal intermittent. I suspect that some of the capacitors are failing. I'm going to replace the electrolytics on the primary side of the circuit, so it means taking the power supply out again and opening it all up. The one I expect that is most likely to be faulty is this one. This one is close to this power resistor. You can see that it has browned the board around it. So you know this gets hot and that is very bad for surrounding components. And this one is most susceptible to heat. Here is the closest schematic I could find to my power supply. Both that resistor and capacitor are across the emitter and collector of Q1. That would affect the pulses at the base of Q2, which is the main switching transistor. I'm speculating that it's enough to cause the crowbar circuit on the other side to shut down the power supply. But if I'm here, I might as well replace these as well. That would be these four capacitors right here. I've removed the uh, five capacitors and I've marked the polarity. I think this is toasted. I might test this one. This capacitor is no good. Contrast that with this. It's not ideal, but it's reasonable. Here we go. It's fully loaded. Power supply is still on the workbench though. Sounds promising. I'm going to put it back together and see if it can go half an hour or an hour without shutting down or doing something else irritating. I've had the computer on for about three quarters of an hour, long enough for me to type in a small program, and so far it hasn't failed, which is great news. I think the power supply is working. I can start thinking about the video that I had meant to work on on this computer before it died. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please consider subscribing to Mr. Brown's Basement for more interesting and unusual videos.